Good afternoon, everybody. Um, there's a real picture of a granddad on the screen. Uh, so I'm known as a granddad of M2M or IoT and been in the business quite a long time. Uh, I actually am a granddad twice over now, so it's getting towards the end of my career. But this is probably one of the most exciting things I've done uh, since doing work on the fiber optic communication systems. IoT is really, really the thing that's making me come to work every morning, wake up. And I have a rule to my guys saying, if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like going to work, you're in the wrong job. I wake up in the morning and I want to go to work. This is a really, very great area. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Internet of Things sort of comes together as a, an ecosystem and how important that is that you do work together as teams and not as fragmented individuals. So the Internet of Things is actually that. It's actually the talking between things and between parts of that total chain. So what really is it about today? It's more about the business-based outcomes that, that the customer is looking for. They're not, looking, they're not coming to me saying, Alan, can you connectorize this car to our back end? They're asking me for a business insight, and that's the key thing these days. So it's far, far more than just taking a item, connectorizing it through the internet, and pulling data. It's actually moving way back, or way beyond that, to go actually get the data and do something with the data, and then come out with a business case and insight. So they're looking for business-based services. So it's exactly what we, we try to do. We try to look at the total chain. I'll go over this a bit more in, the, in, the, in my speech to you. But we look at all the way from the embedded device all the way through to the final business outcome. So to do that, you need multi-partners. There's a lot of companies who think they can do it all on their own. They start off with an application. They try and build a simple platform, and they say, OK, I'm in the IoT business. I can produce this. But they still need partners in different areas to, to actually to expand that and get the best out of that. So what we try and do is pull that all together as a company. So if the, those of you who don't know who Wipro is, Wipro is about 160,000 employees based mainly in India, but uh, operating in 61 countries around the globe. And we are not only an IT company, we're an engineering company as well. So we do a lot of engineering uh, on devices and on products and also help some of the chip builders build their chips, the silicon chips. So all the way from that to the finest insight. So this is a big question for everybody. Collaborate or compete? Okay, so you've seen what's happened. The telco companies will look at this is a new part of our business. This is an area where we can increase data being put across our platforms. But how far do they go? Do they start then saying, OK, I want to move more now into the business, offering services to my clients? Can they go further than that? Can they offer insights to their, those customers and give them a business outcome? So it's a total chain moving along. So it's going to be a balance between strong technologies, and partnerships in the domain area. So domain knowledge is key. So when we look at working with companies like uh, telecommunication operators, they have certainly got the customer base. They have the, the security side and they have the communication side to be able to get the data to that, from that client's objects to the back end. But what they don't have is the knowledge of that customer's domain. They don't know the business. There's a big error. On our side, from an SI side, we don't understand communications. We understand security of data, but not the communication side. So we need the telcos and their expertise on that. But we have the domain knowledge to push that forward. So this question mark, how far do you go along? So we've seen the telco operators moving more into the SI role. And we've seen manufacturers of products moving more through the SI role. So there's a complete uh, vehicle going, a wheel going round and round. How do you work together? How do you meet that? And the key thing comes down is you have to really focus on your key strengths. So you could say I'm in the automotive business if you make a spark plug for a car, but you're not selling the whole car. You'd go to, a, you heard the name this morning, Audi or BMW, whoever, to buy the car. You wouldn't go to Champion who are selling spark plugs to, to buy a car. So you have to look at the total chain, how you actually do that. Look at the strengths of each and every area. So you have strengths in companies that just do this. They do the actual good visualization of applications. You have companies that do good strength on analytics that you're going to need for the total chain. 
So you just, if you just try and do the whole thing on your own, then it's going to be a very weak solution. You have to pick the elements of each and every strong case. So you might be familiar with this type of system. This is some of the plugs you see in the US and uh, the different variants of that out there. So the dynamics uh, of the business of IoT can change very, very, whether it's in uh, which region it's in, what the monetary side is in, the logistics side, the legalities. The, the total thing is very, very mixed. And so there's, in IoT, there's not one size fits all. But you do need to have uh, standardization to a certain extent. You'll start to see standardizations of various platforms. So when you start looking at it, I'll give you an example. We had a company come to us who saw that their competitors were moving into a more advanced field. They were making simple splicing machines, uh, sorry, uh, welding machines. Machines that weld metal, an old technology. They want to move into be able to control that technology. They want to move to a way of going from selling a product to leasing a product. So with the Internet of Things, you'll start to see more companies changing their business models away from the actual sales of products into leasing of products. By that, they can control what products are out there. They can control the maintenance schedules. They can control when they want to release a new product and phase out another one and how many they actually support. So that's one element we've seen a big change coming forward. There's obviously a business model change and a, a change in the money in which they're getting. It's not going to be money up front when you sell a product. But realistically, when you look at sales of something like a car, when someone sells the car, they make so much pr profit on that car when they sell it. But the most money is coming in on the maintenance and the servicing later on in its life. So how do you keep that client? You've got to be able to keep the customer in the system with you. It's easy to sell something to somebody, but to maintain that relationship is far more difficult. People aren't so loyal. So loyalty is something that customers are looking, or suppliers are looking for, and being able to hold the client into that perspective over a long period of time is key going forward. So they'd like to sell added services on top of this. So with this particular manufacturer of a uh, welding machine, they have different products. They have them in their like you and I at home in our garages, a simple uh, welding machine, or they could be selling them to major shipbuilding companies, or it could be in the automated uh, plant situation where you have the robotic arms with these things. So what they wanted to do, they wanted to do two things. They want to look at, first of all, can we pull data from a machine that hasn't got any data port? It only has a simple computer key. So first of all, we had to overcome that problem by actually building a device and using some chip technology to pull the data from that equipment. So we involved, at that point, a chip manufacturer. And there's plenty out there that you can work with. So that chip, we make that actual device that then interfaces with the equipment. So then you've managed to take, pull data from that piece of equipment. The device we produced was either Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or GSM to send data to a back end. Some processing can be done at the front end if you want to, to reduce your amount of data. So the data is sent over the cloud, into a cloud, and then pulled down into the platform. So we've gone through having relationship with a chip manufacturer, device manufacturer, engineering, which is our, we do that in-house, going through to the communications side, then coming through to the actual platform, cloud, where you have the edge technology, or sorry, the, uh, where you start looking at the data uh, acquisition, and you start then doing analytics. Analytics can come from a different platform, it can come in-house, can come outside. And then from the analytics, you come out with an insight, and then you're looking at prescriptive, or sorry, I should say predictive or prescriptive analytics. So you're actually not only saying that the machine is going to fail at this point, you're actually saying when you should service it to do that. So the customer wanted to, in this case, Look at their splicing machines, they want to, or welding machines. They want to know exactly where they were in the world. They want to know what they were doing, how they were being used, for quality reasons relating that to the welds that are being used. Then further forward, getting data back from the, the welding equipment to see how they can improve that welding equipment in future terms. So that's machine learning coming back. To do that, when we made the total offer, we used no less than six partners to do the whole end-to-end -end chain. 
Okay, so the ecosystem matches together. Now you'll see some of the operators, the telco operators in the world, have actually taken that to one step further to actually try and build their own ecosystem of partners coming in to have like a, a hackathon workshop in their own buildings to get the person over here would be an SI expert, the person over here would be an analytic expert, working together. So what we're trying to say is that you will not do this, if you want a, the smart world, if you want the internet of things to really flourish, it will not be done by individual groups doing individual things. It would be everybody collaborating together, taking the strong points of each and every industry. So that it's a balance between, as we say, the, between the domain and the technology. So this is one of the things that we try and uh, do, is we, to make this work, there's no big uh, off, uh, RFPs or qu uh, quotes, requests for quotations out there in the field for these things. So typically this is being done by conferences like this, people being interested in what to do. But there's a lot of education that needs to be done as well. So, so many people come to us and say, we've been told we should be involved in IoT, but we don't know what it means to us or how it can be done. It's very rarely we actually use the word or the letters IoT when we talk to the client. We're talking more, as I say, of the business outcome. So first of all, it's, it's so important when you do engage in these things that you deal with the business side of the company, not just the technical side. So we will come in and do an envision and solution design. This would be a workshop sitting there with business owners. So be in the room would be the CFO, the COO, the CTO. The business owners, including the CFO, who's interested in what money you can get back at the end. Having gone from that workshop, we then move more into the, the POC side, the, the proof of concept, build and integrate the vision. And moving on, you would then start looking at how you roll this out on a bigger scale. And then finally, the, the actual uh, solution operations, etc. So there we would have actually what we call a, a command center, where you would sit in a, I don't know if anybody who's been in a, a large uh, operation center for a, a knock for a telco, you'll see a, a wall full of uh, screens. And on those would be looking at the various assets around the world that you're monitoring. So we do this. We actually sit there and monitor people's assets and we'll take first and second line support to help them control those assets and give them the business insights they're looking for. So we're going through their process transformation, service transformation, and business transformation in three chunks. So basically, this is how it, it works. So if you look at the very front end, and these are some of the elements you have to work with. So you need someone who understands the domain and the business. So this is the area where we've actually made within, within Wipro a consultancy and advisory uh, forum where we can actually go out to our clients and actually offer them that service to educate them around this IoT. You've heard a lot of talk in this particular conference about smart cities, smart utilities. The question always comes back to me, it's, it's very, very good on paper, but how are we going to integrate this? How, who's going to pay for the services and how, how can that business model work? So this is one area, the consultancy advisory side, that you need to look at. If not from us, from somebody else. You need to understand the problem and what you want out as a business solution before you jump into the, the point of actually trying to connect things. You need to know why you want to do this. The device and engineering, uh, that part, the device and uh, engineering side of it for us is very, very key. And it's a big part of Wipro. So we do a lot of device engineering in one of our groups. So here, this is where the key thing is, how do you get that data from somewhere? How do you actually connect to things out in the field that's already been made? So retrofitting the equipment out there in the field is also a big, big part of the business. So when we look at the total chain, we look at two things. We look at everything from the supply chain side to the, fi the finished product. So out on our, our stand outside, you'll see a video about the supply chain. So all the way from the raw material to the, fit the products produced. And during that part, you have IoT coming into play in, during, in that process. Some part of the process will also include the shop floor itself, where you're looking for efficiencies, prediction of a machine that's going to fail. Um, if you're making chocolate, this is always the famous one for me, if you're making chocolate bars, it doesn't sound like high technology, but I promise you, if, if that machine X goes wrong in the chain from A to Y, not forgetting Z, if that one goes wrong in the middle, 
somewhere along the chain, then the whole process stops and it's a huge problem. So predicting the failure on that chain is key for the whole process to work. So looking in the shop floor side for efficiencies and, and maintenance program, uh, programs is key. So we use this on the feedback side. So one side I said is from the supply chain to the product. The other side, which is a very, very big one, which interests most uh, companies who are selling product, is the after sales market. And as I said, comes in twofold, comes in maintaining the relationship with the customer. Some companies have come to me and asked me they'd like to sell customer satisfaction as a product. And that to me was a quite, quite a strange thing, strange thing to ask for. But when you start going into the details, you can understand what they mean. They want to be able to keep that client, as I said, to be able to sell him added services. So once you've got the client there, what more can I sell to him? And you may have seen today, well, where I live in the north of Sweden, we have an uh, electricity company that sells me electricity. But now they want to sell me a lot of added services on that to simplify the bills I get, to simplify the logistics for me, to simplify the number of people I need to talk to. So these things are moving quite, quite fast with added services going on. So the actual getting the data out of the, the device to through the cloud to start using it is key. Then comes the part of system integration. So here is a, a role for typical SIs like ourselves as well. So taking the data, doing something with the data and processing it. And that goes through the platforms where we actually look at the edge, edge side, actually how to acquire the data, to move the data around, moving into the more of the analytical structure and then visualizing that towards the clients. Because at the end of the day, people don't want to read just sheets and sheets of data or just graphs. They want to see some visualization of what it means to their business. So all the way through this, we're looking towards a business front. And at the end is the key thing for us, is a managed operations side. How can we envisage what's happening to your products? How can we then control them and actually monitor them and see what, where they start moving off their uh, ideal performances? And what alarms do we produce for that? And how do we actually sell that? So in one instance, uh, it's a large company in the US. It's a ma major chain store. They have 1,400 stores in America. We monitor every one of their stores for their heating, their lighting, the ventilation, um, the movement of their, their automatic doors for putting the heating on and off, especially in, in cold weather. So we monitor every one of those stores from Bangalore in India. And what we're monitoring is how much energy they're using and how looking for areas how we can help them control and save money on their energy costs. And the way we get paid is by, if they save money on energy, we get paid a percentage. If we don't save them money on their energy, we don't get paid a thing. So that's a, a business model which is based purely on the business outcome. So you do your job and you do it well, and we get paid. If we don't do any benefits, we don't get paid. And this is a thing you might see more and more coming forward, that people need to be convinced on the process of IoT, Internet of Things, what benefit is it for the business. So if you can get that message across in the form of a business model, it's quite easy. If you just say to someone, I'm going to charge you so many krona or so many dollars per asset per day to monitor your product, it doesn't really give them the feel of a business insight and an outcome. So it's thinking outside the box as far as that's concerned. So I've taken about 20, 22 minutes now just discussing that. So I'm really thinking out, is there any sort of particular questions people would like to ask? This is the chain we look at. So remember, it's key to have the ecosystem together. You need the elements of the operator, the device manufacturers, the system integrators, the analysts, and maybe the business modelers. But the key thing running across that from the client side is you need the interaction, not only the technology side and domain side of the company, but also the business people within that company without which the actual business idea of IoT won't work. Okay, thank you. Alan, thanks very much indeed. Fascinating insights. I'm sure there are questions. I think my colleagues have, why not a round of applause? Quite right too, I thoroughly <laughs> enjoy those insights. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I think my colleagues have microphones. Okay, <laughs> sounds better. Okay, so uh, that was a very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. 
my question to you is, do you look at IoT as a catalyst for uh, small businesses and startups to help big guys like IBM, Wipro, Cisco uh, bridge any gaps within the offering to their clients? Well, in this field of IoT, you see many, many startups coming, and they come, come obviously to, to us as well to look for, for help and how they can stitch the things together. So we see a lot of small startups needing a home and we've seen in the various areas, in either in, in an industry area or, in a, 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 uh, or within a, a, geographic, a geographical area, companies come together in like IoT forums. As I mentioned to you, the telcos do this. Uh, they try and help those companies come together and obviously they're helping themselves by, by doing that. So we see a lot of the small companies doing the application, a lot of the application with the niche businesses. Uh, sometimes they may, their business may be only a, a million dollars. Uh, compared with some of the multi-million or billion dollars when we're looking at the larger companies such as Cisco, etc. But they still play a part in that ecosystem. So they're, they're as important as, as the big companies, yes. But they need to be kept in a forum and you need to have some standardization moving forward on that. Thanks very much indeed. We can take one more question. Yes, please, sir. Thank you. The gentleman right at the front here with his hand raised. The microphone is with you now. Thank you. Good afternoon. Ala Dalgan from BNB Smartworks. Uh, my question is, we've heard a lot of, uh, from vendors, and I'm actually interested in hearing from SIs because they are the ones who are going to spearhead the IoT implementation. All the SIs that I meet in the market today are either well, very well versed in IT and know nothing about automation, or very well versed in control, and they get confused by the terms DHCP or IP. Uh, IoT clearly needs both skill sets within one system integrator. Correct. How do you think we should create this new breed of SIs? I'm slightly, well, I've, been, I've worked for several SIs before, uh, and, I, and I know exactly what you mean. I've worked with SIs which are very much focused just on platform build. And this is one, one decision we made within Wipro. We weren't going to be a platform builder. We are more of a domain expert in those areas. So. You have to, it's a difficult mix to make. Some people say you're either an engineering company or you're an SI. For our side, we're slightly a hybrid between the two. So we do have this group called uh, Project, sorry, Product Engineering Services that makes devices, that makes technology, builds chips, etc., for the company. So we understand that side of the business. Um, but we, the key thing is having that domain knowledge. Without the domain knowledge, this isn't going to work. You're going to end up with uh, someone building you a a small car to go and run in the Formula One Grand Prix. So you have to have the right knowledge of what you're actually building is the right thing. So I think SIs would have to take on board a lot more engineering and domain knowledge if they want to be able to lift up to that level. Otherwise you're going to have to have, again, the ecosystem is what I said earlier. You can't, you have to, you have to focus on what you do best. But sometimes it's very difficult to get the, the SI company to understand the, 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 the business problem and that's the key thing. Very often they'll try and just sell a solution based on a platform solution. This could A to B. It doesn't really address the, the business problem of the client. And very often within a, a, a client's organization, the business problem area isn't talking to the technology problem or the other way around. So it, it's as much the client's problem as well. So you have to have that balance. So one thing we try and always do when we sit down with major clients is to get the technology people and the business people in the same room. And sometimes this is the first time they've been in the same room for many, many years. It's, it's quite, a, quite an experience. Alan, it's been a great pleasure great. having you our first speaker after lunch. Thanks very Thanks much very indeed. Much. Alan Atkins of Wipro, appreciate it. Thank you.